is Steve Lavelle. I'm stationed here in Clark Air Base in the Philippines. I'd like to wish everybody in New York, especially my family and my friends, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, I'm Brian Kenny. Join us each week for the WTZA-TV Bowling Tournament. This week, our champion, Ron Ooh Baby Jansen of Kingston. He edged Willie Lattimore of Wappingers Falls, beat him by just two pins. You can qualify, too, for our tournament. Just contact one of these 17 qualifying houses that you see on your screen. Maybe you, too, can be on our show. The WTZA-TV Bowling Tournament every Sunday at noon. Chamber. Just couldn't resist. This Gaben siren call is too good. I'm in on a rail though. Blah, blah, blah. Which means I gotta fucking. I don't think you can take take Barney's with you. You come here. Come here. Stop. All right, fine. We playing Half Life. We playing. Oh. We playing Half Life. We sip and drank, and we got the natty light ready to go. It's gonna be a night. Let's make it one. Her. Oh, Gaben got me again. Out. Right. Out. Her. It's electric water. Yeah. 70's a pack, so here I am. Not enough stalker. Yeah, you're kind of right. I was gonna say Metro Last Light just came out. Or sorry, Metro Exodus, but nobody's playing that either. Half-Life's my dad's favorite game? Well, fucking out me, why don't you? I guess I'm- I guess I'm goddamn old. I moved my mic, so... I don't know how it sounds. I hope it's good. Half-Life is too- Half-Life 2 is too hard? That's interesting. Cause in playing- in replaying Half-Life Source, I'm kinda surprised at how hard it is. A man is 53. It's genuinely odd that he would find Half-Life 2 too difficult. Hmm. Actually, I take that back. Some of the Nova Prospect sequences are rough. Folks might be wary of Epic Store. No, I mean, it, it's sold. The game has sold pretty well, um, which might be epic propaganda, but... I just don't think it's a... Not a very streamable game. People don't really stream, like, that kind of game, it seems like. Doesn't get the viewers. It's not a battle royale. not liking on a rail. I'm not liking this this level and I don't remember why exactly. It's like kind of puzzle puzzly. What happened to Sekiro? I decided not to play it right now. But I might change my mind later. Yeah. I got to uh, I finally found like probably the area I'm supposed to go to. A, uh, I got to the temple with all the monks around it. After going way where I was totally not supposed to go. Got a call from a doctor after the blood break this morning. She didn't even take vitamin D supplements. Got my HRT. What are HRT? Are just heart meds? Yeah. OLED. And the nostalgia is real strong. This game has like Star Wars level sound effects. Everything, every sound effect is like shit, man. That's it. Just, it sings. This is also one of those like last PC games that has a super wide FOV and a really high frame rate. 
Like, it, it is a Quake-style first-person shooter. And I don't remember any any game like that after this. Half-Life 2 wasn't even quite like this. Doom 2016, kind of. Kind of? It's still not quite the same. The FOV's not quite as wide. Weird. It's weird to go back. Emo. Emo, I am awesome. I'm going to bed. I understand. The hour's late. Dusk. Yes, Dusk. Dusk is absolutely that kind of game. It and a medieval as well. I mean, they they're kind of wraparound in that regard. Like they're they're trying to be like this instead of just being this. But I think it still counts. You know? Yeah, dusk. Good call on dusk. Here's my question: Why did dusk seem to grasp people when a medieval did not? I guess people are just into like that into that vibe of game more. They don't like the weird hexen style fantasy shit. Ugh. Wait, what happened? I may have just missed it. What are you guys talking about in chat? Oh, okay, well. No big deal either way. It seems like there'd be a reason to come over here. But I have not deduced one. About fear? Fear was pretty slow. Fear was good, but not, like, it wasn't a, a real fast shooter. Yeah, Dusk is, Dusk is great. It's a game that dares to just be gameplay gameplay forward and have moments that are more about your experience playing than uh, than like scripted moments or story sequences. Just focusing on map design and the flow of a level and and where they can where they can plan your eyeballs going and stuff. It's pretty cool. What keyboard are you using? Uh, this is. This is the first model of Razer Black Widow keyboard that they released. I think I bought it in 2010 or 2009, somewhere in there, and I've used it ever since. Uh, it's getting a little, little, little resistive in its old age. I think I need to clean it or something. I am scared of the day that it just breaks or is non-functional. Non -functional. That will not be a fun time. I think... Oh, sick. I'm My computer case is probably the oldest component that I'm still using, and the next to that is my keyboard. It wasn't my mouse pad for a long time, but I've, I've switched that up, traded it up recently. Might be able to replace the switches? Maybe. They didn't... When they made this model, like, disassembling the keyboard and having different kinds of switches was not in vogue yet. So, I don't know that this this model keyboard can really do that. Because I don't think it... I really don't think it was built to do that. There's like a rubber foot that never really put back on, so let me see here. Razer Black Widow, model number RZ030039. Product number... Oh, there's the thing. That's a whole thing. I was kind of hoping there'd be a, a year on the bottom or something, but it doesn't look like it. But yeah, it's heavy shit. Can you pop the keys off? Not really. I've never tried, but yeah, with, with most new mechanical keyboards, you can just pull the keys off and, like, replace them. I'll try with an arrow key. Not really. No. This is, like, this was... This was the first mechanical keyboard that was ever made since the, the Model M. As I recall. So this was like, this is first run shit. And when they announced it, I was like, yes, I want that badly. And I was like, hell yeah, Razer, for actually making like real good, real good shit. Ah, oh, that's right. Ah, uh, tricks. Um, and since that happened, 
they released several other revisions of the Black Widow that had like removable keys and stuff like that. Mario Atari, see you, or peace out. Been lurking as a playthrough Hyperlight Drifter and all gamed out. What a good game, man. I need to put more, oops! I need to put more time into Hyperlight. I got like one of the four things. Diamonds. I didn't play enough of the game to get any kind of idea of what those were or why I care about them, but I know I need to get them. Hormone replacement therapy, gotcha, okay. You've started. Congratulations. <laughs> yeeting the testosterone? I think I think JC's yeeting the estrogen, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Gree is great too, yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah, you're heating that. Okay, my bad. I did not even finish your chat message. Sorry about that. You're totally eating the testosterone. Okay. I guess what I remember for, about On a Rail is that it follows a lot of big... Uh... Like, set piece style things. There's the claw monster in Blast Pit. There's that giant monster in Bl Blast Zone, I think. And then Auto Rail is like, you gotta train, and you have to backtrack a lot. And it's like, okay, cool. Now that doesn't sound fun. Fucking hell. Yeah. Not looking good, coach. Fuck! Hup! Arr! Oh! I'm gonna die! Alright. Oi. So that's a sequel to Hyperlight? Really? No way! I know they announced the series, I didn't think there was a sequel. No, that was a bad idea. Shotgun is not good. Nope. No, no, no. We need that. We need that nade. This is the thing. This game is not easy. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Hydrobot. Hydrobot's the two true OG, as we've established, so system shock next. Well, it's on the list, as JC has been uh, steadfastly maintaining, which I appreciate. CJ Rickle, or is it, is it Junior Ickle? Oh, some shock one or two or both. I, oh boy, I so I was not, I didn't have a PC when System Shock One came out. Uh, I played it on stream for a couple of hours. I get, I respected it, but I don't know if that's a game I could play all the way through. I mean, I could, I absolutely could, but I'm. Ugh. There's some quality of life stuff in that game. It's 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 rough. The most fuckable horror icon. Oh, that's what you guys are talking about with, with Patrick Bateman and stuff. Most fuckable horror icon. Ted Bundy. Norman Bateman. Norman Bateman wants to fuck his mom. I don't know that that makes him fuck a bull. That is some nope territory shit.
Yeah, the interface is rough, for sure. It was pretty cool, actually, because, yeah, there was a stream a while ago where I played System Shock 1 for a bit and then went on to 2. And I gained a whole new appreciation for the UI and layout of System Shock 2. Because I'd only ever played 2, and I liked it a lot. But I didn't get its quirks. Like, I was like, why are you like this, System Shock 2? And it was a it was a cool mix of, like, action and, and pretty intense stat-based RPG. That got a little dumbed down in Bioshock and then even further dumbed down in Infinite. But, you know, whatever. In the age of... Or we were in the age of dumbed down games. It's kind of going the other way, which is a fucking phenomenal. Holy shit, these guys do a lot of damage. Um... So... Fucking hell. A lot of words to say. Uh, yes. Interface is pretty rough in System Shock 1. System Shock 2 basically took everything about it and made it much more workable. Without losing any of the... Gameplay complexity. I think I think they did a really good job adapting Bioshock for a console because my God is is Bio or is System Shock 2 ever a PC game? I don't know that you can get away with a game like that on a controller or just without a mouse, basically. God damn, these guys are angry. Scars guard Pennywise. He's fucking with kids, though. Is the problem. It's hard to hard to get get your get your fuck desires on somebody who is terrorizing children. And Freddy is d does that, but he he's more into sexually active teenagers, and mostly with him, it's like his goofy sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's a phrasing issue. So that Ken Levine is not making games anymore, really like storytelling. He is. You just haven't seen what it is. He's got it. Irrational Games didn't close. That's the thing people keep forgetting. They fired everyone, but it didn't close. And they didn't fire everyone. I think I think Mr. Levine pared it down to like my understanding is that Ken Levine pared it down to like 15 people, and they're working on a project. So I from the outside, it, it seemed like he was kind of over running a studio. Which I can get, especially after Infinite. I can get him being like, no, fuck this. Fuck this. I don't want to manage 300 people. I want to make games. I want to make games with a creative team. Is, I bet, I'm... Would bet where his, where his head was at, and I can't fault him for that. Can't kind of fault him for fucking over the lives of hundreds of people, theoretically, maybe? Seems like what happened. Ghost Story Games. That's right, they did change names. Yes, forgot about that. Product management with that sort of studio is a damn nightmare. Yeah, I. that has to be the job you want to do. And nobody that starts as a creative director on a video game wants to manage 300 people. Maybe, well, I shouldn't say nobody, but those two jobs are so different that there's... If somebody develops a real skill at one of them, it's very unlikely. Did I just kill myself with fall damage? I think I did. Yeah, I got two health. Okay. I think it's unlikely that that person would then want to just be like, Okay, sure. I'll worry about payroll and HR and legal and... I'll Instead of designing a game, I'll just worry about that stuff all day instead. I, I can't see somebody who has a talent and a passion for game design being cool with that, like, migrating into that position. Sorry, I'm just making another pass for items and stuff because I need health badly. So, yeah. Man, you want to talk about... Whew. It's weird because... Not, not saying that, like, this is the story of what happened at all. This is just a theoretical from the outside. But let's say you are a creative person and you make a good product because you love the medium and you're really... You've worked very hard in, at developing a skill set. And it's so successful that then everyone looks to you as a leader and a manager. And even society sort of thinks that the, that role is more valuable. And you're like, well, okay. But that's not... Like, that's different. That's a different kind of work. And I can do it, but it's not what got me here, and it's not what I want to keep doing. Except now that... Now that you're there, to walk away from it means that you 
you personally will cancel the livelihoods of tons of people. So you either resign yourself to it, you're like, okay, this is what people want me to do, so I'll do it. Or you say, I will actually not do this, and sorry everybody, but... This sucks. I didn't ask for this. I, I, I don't... This doesn't make me happy, and it's not fair that I have to do this. I don't know. Rough, rough theoretical. I do like imagining that. I like imagining uh, emotionally complicated scenarios. And trying to find the right answer when there may not even be one. Oh, thank you, slow-mo. Whoa! They're mad. Let's back up! Back up, back up! Go on, go faster! Shit. Uh, thank you for the cheer. Uh... I don't think their AI is active. I got a few of them. Here's, here's an emotionally complicated scenario for you, and I was just turning this over in my head the other day. Uh... How do you handle... What's, what's the optimum solution to somebody asking a question in Twitch chat that was just asked? Because either they're new to chat or didn't hear the answer. And their question was asked in good faith. But to repeat the answer is theoretically annoying to the other viewers because they just heard you say the same thing. So then, what do you do? What's, what's the optimal solution? Let chat answer it. But then, wouldn't that person feel ignored? Wait for chat is an interesting interesting solution that I actually hadn't thought about. That wasn't I didn't even consider that that might be an option. But I wouldn't if somebody is somebody I guess that's a good that's a good because if somebody's asking a question because they want the answer. Fuck! I was like I'm gonna hit the rail and die. Ugh! Put the answer in the title of the stream. Yeah. Somebody could either be asking because they want the answer to the question, or because they want to interact with the streamer! God damn it! Can expect streamer to answer everyone. I guess that's true. Ooh! Got ace on that trigger. Shit, somebody actually asked another thing that I wanted to address. I was like, ooh, that's a good, that's a good thing to talk about. I'm gonna do this, just in case it clicks out of full sc Oh, it did! Oh, actually, it's fine. This is actually a pretty pure... Pretty pure image. Feels good. Alright. Um... Somebody... What did I miss? Oh, yeah! Mr. Roger... Mr. Roger's blood... Hold on. Mr. Roger's blood-stained sweater. You bring up a very good point, Hideo Kojima. Theoretically, at this point, he walks the line between, yeah, being studio head and also creative director. Um, of, of doing the, like, management tasks plus uh, creative creative direction. I would... God damn it. Um, so, we haven't seen Death Stranding. But, evidence points to the fact that he's very bad at doing... Well, he's bad at doing one of those things. Evidence points to the fact that he is a great game director and maybe a not-so-talented studio director. Like, he's great at the creative and he's great at organizing teams. He may not be so good at, I guess, producing is the word? Theoretically. And I'm basing that purely off of how long it took him to make Metal Gear Solid 4 and how long it took him to make Metal Gear Solid 5. It took him a long time to make those games justifiably. Those games are fucking absurd. But they probably cost a lot of money. And I'm gonna guess didn't really make their money back entirely. I need to do some more research, but... Man. Just looking on from the outside, I can get why Konami would be like, We're done with you. Yeah. They didn't even finish five. Yeah. 
that was absolutely a case of, of uh, Konami being like, we've spent enough money on this. You're shipping it, and by the way, you're done. We're going to recoup whatever cost we can. Oh, boy. He's lucky that Sony, Sony gave him a blank check. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, uh, Joaquin Mogren, Witch Hunter? Yeah, that was great, huh? Imagine imagine being PR at Sony, or PR at Konami, and you're like, okay, so we're gonna like put out a trailer, and we're gonna tell people to buy the game, and the Kojima's like, no, we're not. No, we're not. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna hire somebody to wear a bunch of bandages and be someone that the audience doesn't even know his name. Konami's like, wait, are you trying to make people not buy this? Metal Gear Solid 5, Kojima? It's been in development for five years, let us make a trailer. No. I will be Joaquin Magren. So that 2,000 nerds on the internet will think it's funny. And you're just like, oh my god. My god, Kojima. Are you really doing this shit right now? Look at his contract. Can he do that? He can like do that. that. Oh my god. Sooner or later. I guess you're right. No one has a clue what the fuck Death Stranding is. I wonder how Sony feels about that. I mean, yeah. I don't know if we should go any That actually happened? I don't know that it happened, alright? I'm throwing out theoretics right now. Throwing out theoretics. Uh, I want to make that 100% clear. But... For me... What, what doesn't make sense is that Konami is evil and wants to make people suffer. There's no reason for Konami to be like, Kojima, you're a great employee and you make games that sell so well, but fuck you! Like, it doesn't make sense. No one in business is like that. There's got to be a reason. So, I don't know. Everyone likes to pretend like... I mean, some of the... Some of the shit that came out about the working conditions of Konami were kind of unforgivable, but at the same time... Shit! At the same time... If you've got... To me, what that reads like is... Is... Kojima has 300 employees. And Konami's like, what are they doing all day? What are they doing all day, Kojima? And he's like... Don't worry about that. And they say, we are worrying about that because we're paying your fucking paycheck. What are they doing? Kojima said, they're making art. And then Konami said, oh my god. Give us a game in a year, or we're going to ship whatever you have. Kojima was like, mm, yes, Konami, evil. I don't know, man. These are other ways to look at it. Konami had to pay for it. Sometimes I think it is, like, it is kind of like... Teenage kid parent? Like, I pay your fucking rent, dude. You don't get to have opinions about capitalism before you pay taxes. So, yeah, I don't know. Not saying this is how it went down because I'm not a mind reader. But, I do know that companies are, usually aren't in the business of being evil for evil's sake. Usually they're evil because it makes them money. Or because it prevents them from losing money. One of the two. That said, Kojima is a fucking brilliant game designer whose legacy is unimpeachable. So, let me put that out there too. Not saying he's a bad guy. But, I mean, con consider like Ken Levine's scenario when he's like, I can do this work but I don't want to consider a version of Kojima's scenario where he's like I can do this work and everyone else around him is like you shouldn't want to that's that's too much for one person like you have to specialize Kojima and you are very good at designing games please don't assume that you can also run a studio it's just aren't enough hours in the day my man but Kojima's the guy right he's got the Levine effect where everybody like looks to him and calls him a leader even if he didn't ask to be one Because he's the guy. That's a, a weird thing about human nature. You want to look to a leader. One person.
Kojima has big dick energy. He studied economics. I, so like, I, I'm just fucking. I'm just spouting words right now. I want to make that really clear. I have, I don't have a business degree. I've never worked for Konami. I've never. I've talked with some people who have worked for Konami, but never about this topic in, in any capacity. So, I don't know what I'm saying. I just think that there's a narrative that's appealing to listen to. And then to me, there's another narrative that makes a little more sense. To me. But everyone has a different worldview, and I think it's really about to what degree what you hear jives with that worldview. And that's kind of what I'm laying out. To me, what I've seen a lot is not necessarily that... Konami, Konami hates anyone who likes Metal Gear and wants to punish them. Fuck you! Damn it. But more that, uh... There had to be a reason that Kojima was not a good business partner. Fuck! And just touching it wakes it up, huh? Because if Kojima were a good business partner, he would still be a business partner. Memphisuga, thanks for the cheer. Hell Emmerich is a pussy bitch, but he's a sweet. He's this. Is. Is. Is Otacon. Wait, is this Hell Emmerich Sr.? Oh, you could write an entire essay about how much Otacon pisses you off. Never mind. Is Otacon. Is Otacon the original soft boy? And I mean that in the sense that, like, there have been soft boys far, far before Otacon for sure. But in the era where soft boys ex like were known, when we had discovered what a soft boy is, I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps he's he's the original nice guy. Although I think there were there were nice guys far be far before Otacon. They were called bitch boys at the time. <laughs> Ah! I suppose. Despite the fact that I say sick a whole lot, my uh, my slang verbiage is, is somewhat lacking. A soft dick boy. The original soy boy. I don't know that Otacon was a soy boy. He, did, he didn't have that layer of false bravado that soy boys have, right? Like a soy boy will virtue signal and like make so, a lot of brave tweets. I don't feel like Otacon's that guy. I feel like Otacon would meekly tell you his opinion about, like, some slice of life anime. And then the second anyone said anything negative to him, he would stay off Twitter for the rest of the day. Um. He would be on, a, on like, more than one role-playing forum. Are you going to continue Sekiro? Shit, yeah, I am. I'm just not playing it right now. Did he fuck his stepmom or something? Yeah. Yes. The answer is yes. Did you guys just see that Matrix dodge? So I'm pretty sure... Kojima likes his movies. I think he was just going... I think he had just seen The Graduate. I think that's what... I think that's what that's about. I think he was like, wow, The Graduate, wow. I should put that in my game. So much of Kojima's games are... He sees a movie and he's like, wow. Oh gosh, wow, this movie. I should put this in my game. I think that's I think that's what he was doing. Because Otacon is kind of like Dustin Hoffman's character. Dustin Hoffman's character is kind of a, a pile of shit too. And the graduate. Kind of. Warning. Vital signs critical. Because you've been Stephen King are pretty similar. You really you think? I've never gotten that vibe from Stephen King, but I'm also not super well read. Wasn't aware of this key background, Otacon. Oh, my man. Yeah. Play Metal Gear Solid 2, the part where you swim around underwater with your stepsister attached to your back. I'm realizing now Kojima is actually... Kojima is real smart at designing games for ultra, ultra weebs. Which, yeah, no fucking, no fucking wonder he's so loved. Now we will have an entire part of the game where your stepsister, your cute, innocent, vulnerable stepsister, clings to your back while you swim underwater. Otacon gets pussy. Not the right kind. Yeah. 
Doctor Eleven. That's the most succinct spoiler for The Graduate I think I've ever read. Yeah, you have to hold her hand. We have helmets that'll feed you snacks. Where's a helmet that'll hold my hand? Oh yeah, Otacon and Snake's handshake where they're like bap, bap, and then do the predator lockup. Which, you know that Otacon's hand, like the bones in his hand vaporized the second that happened. I only did it once. Yeah! They could have, they could have been like... They should have been Ace Bros in, in fucking Metal Gear Solid 4, but I guess Snake was too busy being alone and pathetic. Imagine that shit, man. What happened between 2 and 4? Where Snake was just like an, a salty asshole. Just couldn't chill out and drink a beer and talk about Marvel movies for a little bit. Snake's always got to be talking about how he's cloned and how life is war and all this shit. Three? Huh? Otacon wasn't a three. Different Snake, too. I'm talking chronologically. Oh god, you guys. Come on. Yes, you can count. Need you to think a little harder than that. Oh, yeah, if you were to, if you were to slap his ass, your hand would fucking break because it's so flat. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of features. In four, at least, he had a little gristle, like he had some stubble, but it was more like, do you just not shave anymore? Did you give up on shaving? Is this what your body can produce after three weeks of not shaving? Yeah, it wasn't the best. I haven't played Metal Gear Solid, you're a fake gamer. It's worth playing. I think even now. Like, people thought it was art back in the day. I think now it's like B-grade camp fun. Which is what it always was, but people couldn't really figure that out. Uh, It's like Resident Evil, but not self-aware. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's like Escape from New York, but not self-aware. This is Metal Gear Solid on Steam. I don't know, how would you play that now? I can't imagine playing... How's Resident Evil self-aware? It's zombies. It's... everything about it is Western horror. You... I don't think you make a story about... Hmm. I'm trying to pin it down now. Yeah, Ninja, I would say Resident Evil knows how ridiculous it is, but they're remarkably similar in tone, aren't they? Like long soliloquies from characters that are like reincarnated slash half vampire slash genetically enhanced cyber ninjas. That shit is in both of those series. So how is it that I think Resident Evil is self-aware where Metal Gear Solid is self-serious? I think it's because Metal Gear Solid also gets preachy. Metal Gear Solid also tries to have a point on top of... Cyber Ninjas. Whereas Resident Evil is just camp. It's camp up and down and through and through. It never tries to lecture you. Aside from saying consumerism is bad. But hey, whatever. That's zombies. So yeah, I don't know. Fair point though. Yeah. Fair point though. I do feel like at times I am too harsh on Metal Gear Solid. There's no way I can get a grenade in there. Oh boy. Have you played Mafia.gg? No, you're not the first person to recommend it either. I don't know, man. I gotta be Half-Life, but... And then I gotta be, uh... Nier Automata. Will there ever be a Metal Gear Solid 6? No. I'm pretty comfortable saying no, never. What would be the reason? You know? Why? There might be another Metal Gear something. But I don't think they're ever going to touch solid, and I don't think they'll ever make a solid six. It can be done. Just like, there's probably never going to be another Godfather? Also okay? Yeah, JC, the list. I'm aware of the list. God. Oh, 
Metal Gear Survive, yep. We all remember Survive. It should ditch the numbers entirely. Yeah, most developers are, just as a... A point of principle dropping numbers. They don't mean much anymore unless you're Final Fantasy. And even then it seems like it's principle more than anything else. Not on Steam? Is it on, I guess, PlayStation Now? I haven't gotten rid of my PS3 fat because it is the last console that has largely true backwards compatibility. And I can't really even... I can't imagine playing Metal Gear Solid without the PlayStation 1 low resolution shit. These PS Now? I don't. I'd never try to. Has an... That might be good, I guess. Because of Hiro Miller's surprising down to earth backstory about being born to a Japanese woman after World War II and the revolver also was raised by the Illuminati. Yeah, and he's like a triple secret agent? Whatever. Kojima can do both. That's the thing. He can do both. And I think the results speak louder than my analysis of his execution. That series is well known. It's well loved. It's iconic. That doesn't happen by accident. So we knew what he was doing. Never owned an official gaming console. Just always PC forever. Is Deus Ex a kind of Metal Gear Solid style game? You can play it that way. Yeah! I think yeah. Metal Gear Solid is a lot of kinds of games, but you can play it like a Metal Gear Solid game and I think it has the plot to match. It is very conspiracy driven, government. Where did it go? supposed to get through the torture sequence in MGS on original hardware. Use auto key to make a super turbo button. I was always able to do it, but I think you're justified in like, it's interesting. There, there are certain, some people just can't mash and I think that's okay. I think that's okay. That's my, that's my brave statement of the night. I know I remember like Resident Evil 6, 5. The, the Chris punching boulder section was a button mash, and you had to do it. Um, and some people, yeah, they just have wrist problems or just don't have that, that muscle. Like, their hands just don't work that way. And it's interesting because... Oh, shit. To me, that's that's one of those... Ow. Minor fracture detected. One of those scenarios where, like... Best intentions, but somebody who played a lot of games just didn't think that there might be a human whose hand doesn't work that way. And they might really want to play that game someday. Almost, you're going to play through Borderlands Remastered? Oof. I feel like that's going to be a game where you'll play it for an hour and be like, oh right, and then you'll stop. Borderlands 1, I remember having, s I remember ha it having some grit and pushback when I played it when it came out. I was like, ouch. This game is fun, and it'll do. Mm. Blarg is correct, though. If you keep pressing the button after... after the torture stops, you can regain more life. Kingdom Hearts 2? There was a mash part in Kingdom Hearts 2? I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, we have to block all the lasers, and I didn't know. And I died a lot there. Yeah, there were a few mash parts for sure. Oh, y'all tricky, huh? 
at you all sneaking in those boxes. I mean, Master feels unnecessary. Uh, it's easy. It's easy and it gives people that are really excited about the announcement something to spend money on right now. I'm okay with it. Uh, some of the stuff that they said for the remaster is really important, like a minimap and four players and stuff like that. Yeah, that was that was some sneak 100 shit, right? I'm visibly looking like a box. I'm, I'm so. My heart is so warm. That Skyrim is so in the consciousness of the world that that is a meme. Just <laughs> Skyrim skills. Warning. Oh shit, that hurt. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, the handsome collection went from 50 to 20 bucks to 60. Oosh. And they also turned off the ability to convert discs into to Steam, right? I think remasters could add. Wait. Do you think remasters could serve the purpose of adding new stuff to the game or just making it look pretty? Uh. It's always a question of like I mean it's 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 always what's viable really I think that it's foolish to assume that game developers don't have a list of things they wish they could do whenever they ship a game and I think mostly that's I think that's most mostly what remasters are, are good for is like okay let's let's dust off our old wish list and ah seems like a lot of the time it is we'll pay another developer to uh brush up those brush up those textures for us we'll give them our, our code base and let them figure out how to make it for players shit I'm not wasting wasting the time Oh yeah, the difference between remaster and remake. Yeah, there is that for sure. It's uh, it's interesting how much of a culture that's become. Uh, oh, you can push the boxes as cover. I actually, didn't I did not know that. I'm gonna break. Them. Get get those sweet batteries now. I, to me, the, like the, the remake culture we're kind of entering, or the remaster culture, I should say. I feel like it's it's totally evidence that there's a, a big wave of gamers. Gamers? Oh, yeah. They're getting older. Paid. Hit and run remake. He's 
the only free man, and you guys are just piles of meat now, so shut the fuck up! <sighs> this is nice. It's very peaceful out here. It sucks. Yeah, same. I made a breakout clone in JavaScript. Oh wait, this way. Okay. Huh. I never played Gravity Rush. One of those games where I was I was convinced of its value, but never got around to playing it. Fuck! God! I like how they go back into like muscular dude pose right away after sh after killing you. Did it. Emergency. User dead imminent. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Are you worrying? Cause stop. I'm good. Okay. Is there a way to grab it? Can you pull or only push? Pretty sure I fucked myself. If that's in the corner, you're you're kind of dicked, right? Java sucks. Yeah, thank you. This is one of many reasons I don't respect Notch. I coded in Java. What kind of baby do you have to be to program in Java? I have zero respect for Java. He's not a Nazi. He just believes in Nazis. Or the Nazi adjacent. Oh, Shit! Damn it! Well, I mean, honestly, Incognito, Java is the worst reason. The fact that Minecraft is made in Java is unforgivable. It's a knockoff of another game made in Java. Bleh. Christ. It's a student project. That's the definition of a student project. I at least used JavaScript and only because it was assigned. I did all my programming in C++. If you don't manage memory, you're not actually coding. There, I said it. Oh, yeah. I don't know why you do this. What was your major? Computer science. your minor? I didn't have one. My minor was working. And popping this natty light. Booyah. Yeah, gaming. Basically, yes. Uh, 
I... Here's what I did in college. I went to school. I worked one, sometimes two jobs. And I played video games. That's it. So yes, it was the best time. Darelol, thank you for subbing via Twitch Prime. I mean, I had no fucking money, but... I worked at a GameStop, so I got a discount and was able to pick up used games and shit. And you could check them out too, so... I had the inside track. Here's... Yeah. Sounds like your life now. Well, this is what you can flower into in a decade or two. Uh... This track is sweet. GameStop won't hire you? Sit here and enjoy this music for now. fully don't know why I did that. Why did I launch that rocket? There's a reason, I think. Anyway, yeah, I don't I don't know why GameStop won't hire you. That sucks. But yeah, I I, I had my shit fucking pretty pretty worked down in the in the background now that I think about it. Cuz I game I worked at GameStop so I could check out games for free and get a very minuscule discount. And then I uh I worked at the school library, which meant that I got paid pretty well to, like, clean computers and tell people where books were. Um, I basically had to, like, wipe down and sterilize our, our, like, inventory of laptops every day. And then also just direct people around to the resources of the library. Essentially, my job was to handle the bullshit questions that the librarian was too qualified to ask. Like, where are the laptops? So I would basically go, if there was anyone in line waiting to talk to a librarian, I would go and be like, hey, can I help you? And then if they had a really easy question to answer, like, where is this section? Where are the books? Where are the microfiche? Where are the computers? I could just, like, tell them that. Uh, which was, it was the fucking sick nastiest job. Because all I had to do was help people, which is so good. So many retail jobs think that they're that, and they're not. It's to, to sell shit. So it was wonderful to just purely be of service, which is something I actually really enjoy doing. Is well. just getting people what they want. And then, um, I thought you had to go down in there, but maybe not. And then that also gave me a discount on my tuition. Bonk, bonk. And then I also had scholarships. So working two jobs, having a discount on my scholarship, and getting free video games. You gotta find the angles! You gotta find the angles in life! It's the dream, yeah! There's gotta be something in this room, right? Do I jump in the globe? Huh! I mean... I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be honest though... I did not... I probably could have broken off some of that video game time and been a little more social because that was an issue. I was not- I did not socialize properly. Did you drop out? No, I graduated. Graduated and got a job uh, coding banking software. That paid very well, but I didn't care. Like, uh... There was a point when, like, I got off of work and I went home and I was like, I got paid. And I was looking at my bank account and I was like, the number's going up, but I don't like this. I'm not happy. So yeah, in college I was already like submitting articles to gaming websites and stuff and I was like, I want to do this for a living. So that's when I started to shift it up. Yeah. 
Barnes and Noble selling booze. Getting fucking wasted at the BNN. Where do I go? Uh. I don't know what to do. Yeah, Mookie Deister, I, I feel bad sometimes describing the state of my life because it's fucking perfect. Uh, it, it's not fair, really. I don't. I feel like I didn't do anything to deserve it. Aside, I mean, I guess I worked pretty hard, but a lot of people work hard. That's nothing new. But I get to spend my days with a woman I love, doing work that I, that means a lot to me and that is challenging and that I really enjoy. To play a lot of video games and work with cool, talented, hardworking people. It's just like fuck. It's just too good. On here. Yeah, okay, okay. I get a new train. Hour 15%. <sighs> Reading self help books. Getting real toasty and trying to figure out where your life went wrong. I got an upgraded train. Ooh, this one's super fast. Oh shit! Downside, thank you! That was a- that was a very fun experience. Oh, I'm sorry! House of Pain, uh, specifically. You guys, it'll never be 1998 ever again. You guys know that? It's 2019 right now. This is over 20 years ago. bit bondish, you're right. I mean, isn't 98 All See Dear Goldeneye came out? I think this is just how music sounded back then. Seven. 95? That doesn't sound right. 97 I could buy. Goldeneye had an awesome soundtrack. What happened to Eric Serra, man? He did Goldeneye and he did Fifth Element. Two amazing scores. And then I... Wait, no, I looked this up because I was watching Goldeneye again the other day and I was like, fuck. Film was 95. Yeah, the game was 97, right? Why'd you switch from computer science to entertainment? Uh... It's strange. Um... I think it mostly has to do with... I realize at some point it has everything to do with who I'm working with and not what I'm... the work I'm doing. If that makes sense. Um... So, I remember... I, I, had, I had kind of noticed this at some point. Because I had the greatest time working at GameStop when I was starting. Because my, my managers were like cool, funny people, and we got along, and like we could talk about games and music and shit, and we'd just hang out, and like we'd help people out when there was work to do, and when there wasn't work to do, we'd still be working, like we'd be cleaning up the store, but it was so much better with like some just spending time with people I got along with. And then 
so so my theory was always that if I worked in computer science, if I worked in code, if I worked around computers, that I'd be working with people that like computers. Uh, people who were kind of dorky, maybe like Doctor Who types, whatever. Man, I can swing. I can. That's cool. But just like nice dorks is kind of what I thought I would be around. And then when I got when I got my my first job, they were there, but. It was mostly, like, just people who got a computer science degree because it paid well. And they, like, they watched a lot of sports, and they weren't bad people. I want to make that clear. I just, just didn't really connect with them. So I felt isolated. And part of that is my fault. The aforementioned didn't develop social skills thing. I'm going to own that part of it. I was, I was not easy to be around. I can I can identify that now. Ah, dang it. Uh, but still, uh, the problem still persisted for me personally, of just feeling alone. Uh, I had I had some good friends at the time who I I uh, feel feel a lot of regret towards because I never really expressed to them how important it was to have somebody that made me feel accepted at that time. But really, I just, man, I've never felt more isolated in my life. Because I was living alone, I was working a job, and like, it was like, you know, eight, nine hour work day. I'd go to work and not really interact with anybody that I felt like understood me or shared any interest with me. Um, so I'd largely be treated like an outsider while I was at work. And then I'd go to my terminal. I'd listen to my Creative Zen MP3 player, which music was very important for me at the time. It's the, to me, music at the time was the only thing that I felt any kind of connection through. Music and games. Um, I'd write code while listening to, like, Bad Religion. And then go home and play video games by myself. Because streaming wasn't then either. So I didn't even have this. Like, I didn't even have this connection. I was just very alone. Was it like Office Space? It was very much like Office Space, yeah. So, uh, at some point I was, I was just so lonely and sad. I was like, I gotta do something to change this up. So still the goal was to find a job, find a vocation. Where I can be reasonably assured that I'll be surrounded by Did you see? my peers, people that share my passion. It was hauled from the Challenger Deep, but I'm positive that beast never swam in terrestrial waters until a week ago. There's a tranquilizer gun in the shark cage, but I'm not sure it would work on this species. You're welcome to try. So, yeah, uh. The, the thing is, like, that's a really scary proposition of thinking, well, damn it, I've, I guess I've arrived, oh, we got a little Jesus shit going on. Um, I have arrived at the impasse that nearly everyone does, which is, if I'm going to be working for the rest of my life, I would like to do it on something that is fun, engaging, and reporting. Turns out for me, it's video games, like a lot of other people exactly like me. Oh, that's the tranquilizer gun. So then it was like, well, okay, I guess I'll start working at it and we'll see what happens. I'll try to do the job that literally everyone else wants to do. A lot of, a lot of blogging, a lot of uh, very thankless work. A lot of drama? I learned that drama is kind of, it's kind of unavoidable when you're dealing with people who have different motivations for why they're doing what they're doing. I found pretty early on that in, in the blogosphere, a lot of writers were not only like 
It was very, it was very bizarrely incestuous in that a lot of writers would copy phraseology. Oh shit, phrasing and uh, and even opinion from like other blogosphere opinion people. It was all this like weird game to just be a person, like to be a thought leader. It's like, what the fuck is this? What is this? What is this? Why? What is this about? Trying to like throw out the most curated hot take. This is dumb. And then there was a whole other factor of like... I am only in this so that I can become friends with Hideo Kojima. And I was like... Ah. That was weird. There, there's a whole faction of people too who are only in it because they want adjacency to... The gaming celebrities that they admire. And they'll put in the time, man. Because I, I think they don't even understand their own motivations. Which gets weird. Um, when... Yeah, when people work on something and not even understand why they want to get into it. That's kind of where I think the drama comes from. I'm sorry, Barnacles, but I don't want to get you... When, when there's a delta between what somebody says they want and what they actually want, that's, that's where drama happens. When you be coming to Gus Johnson's next show? It's coming up on April 3rd and there's still tickets left. I didn't know he did shows. I don't know that I'll be in LA then, though. We're bouncing back and forth to Austin. I'll have to film Arizona Circle, but... Really enjoy the random band-aid shit. <laughs> thoughts on the GOG Warcraft Diablo stuff? No real thoughts. Blizzard Blizzard needs revenue. <laughs> is is what I would think. Uh, they haven't released a product for a while. Uh, they don't have any products coming out this year. So if they can flip... If they can flip a product on GOG and make some money, that's good. That's real good. Honestly, I, I think, uh, I guess it's not really the Epic Game Store's wheelhouse, so it kind of makes sense. It's a good fit, good partner fit. Uh, but I'm willing to bet Diablo sold really good. It was like ten bucks. That was that's such an impulse purchase for a lot of, a lot of people that have ten bucks to spare. So what I think happened is they put out Diablo, and everyone, myself included, bought it, and they were like, oh shit. That's all we have to do? And then Blizzard sprinted across the room and did a full belly dive on the slap release more buttons game. Or the, the release more games button. Because it, it's easy money and I'm not a businessman, but I'm gonna say fiscal 2019 is scary for Blizzard because they don't have a product on deck. Unless Immortal comes out this year. And we don't know what the monetization for that is, so it's hard to say that that's the thing. It might be the thing. It's hard to say, though. So, yeah. Release more buttons. Yeah. More buttons! Ah! Oh, thank God I didn't die. Okay. I thought it might be electric. Posture check. Thank you, Bella. Yes, posture check, everybody. Chin tucked. Head back. Shoulders back. Core engaged. Rotate those hips forward. Ah! Engage core. Yes. Uh, okay. Sit like Captain America would sit. Mm. Sit like you're defending freedom. Uh, so somebody asked... Sorry, kind of scrolled off the top. Uh, but somebody asked what was the last straw. It's funny you ask because I actually do remember what it was specifically. Um, and I, I've told this story before in chat. So this is one of those moments where I'm like... Do I just launch into it or do I apologize to those that might be annoyed at the repetition? Well, I'm going to do the latter. So if you heard this before, apologies, but there may be new ears. So uh, for me, the moment when I knew things had to change was so I worked for a software or sorry, I worked for a company that that wrote software, obviously. Uh, they wrote banking software. It was it was the software that ran on teller machines and banks. Uh, so like, 
Somebody's got to write that, right? Like, there's a lot of boring software in the world. Stuff that runs in your car. Stuff at banks. Stuff in grocery stores. A lot of boring software. But, yo, if it's in every grocery store in the world, that's pretty profitable software. Somebody's got to pay for that. So, there was money in it. Um, and I, I wrote a lot. Well, not a lot. That's too self-aggrandizing. I wrote that. I did a lot of weird projects like writing like machine level code to interact with old teller machines from the 80s like those you know in like gang gang movies when they stick a wad of bills in a thing and it goes tech 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 and counts it like i would write the code that would actually talk to that machine and have an interface that brought that information into our software and pop it up in a nice little window all that boring stuff uh okay so I customized banking software. We had I was part of a team where we were sent to customize. Basically, the, the company would say, here's our product, and we can customize it for your specific bank. Because every bank has custom needs or whatever. They want like specific UI flows or prompts or windows, whatever, uh, for their, their custom products. Or to even teach their employees how to make it themselves because we would give them also the development tools. Uh, so we had a... We had a client that was in Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, and they sent our group out to Green Bay to work on site with them to develop the software. Uh, so basically, our managers could have daily meetings on site with them to to like make a list of features, and then that would come to us, and we would just sit on our folding our folding tables and just like crank away on on feature sets. Uh, so I, I basically spent like three months in Green Bay by myself in a hotel. We had run rental car that if I were, if I were not such a beta cuck, I may have made more of a play to get the keys, but I didn't even want to bite that off. Uh, the, the resident, the resident alpha took the keys and I was like, man, didn't care for that guy anyway. He was an asshole, a self-admitted asshole. So that's not me saying that. But basically, it was me sitting in the hotel room, uh, hooking a PlayStation 2 up to the shitty hotel TV, and playing video games by myself in a room that wasn't mine. Like it was, it was the most alone I've ever been because I couldn't even live. I couldn't even live in a space tailored to me. I went to a hotel room that every time I went to it was reset back to where it was. Uh, and that was that was the most mentally damaging thing. I remember the the effect that had on me was so profound, where at least when I was working at home, or at least when I was working out of uh, my home, like I would go to a place where I didn't really identify with everyone and felt alone. But I would come home, and it was like my space. It was decorated. I had my computer. I had my consoles. I had my TV. I had the things that I liked. And now it was one step beyond that. It was. Now you go to work in a cold, a cold place with no one that you know, and no one identifies with you, and then you go home to a hotel where everything is sterile and, and uniform. And after a month of that, I was just in such a bad place. Like, my MP3 player was honestly my only lifeline to anything that I could even hang on to that, that brought me joy. Um, I remember going on a lot of, a lot of long walks at night, uh, just through the snow and the dark with my mp3 player you know just listening to music and and trying to maintain some grip on who i was and what i enjoyed in life uh and at some point i went on a long walk and i was it was very cold and i got back to the hotel and it was like 10 o'clock or whatever and i was like well there's still time and it is, like, the state that my head was in, I was like, well, I have to do something with the, with, like, I can't go to sleep yet because I'm not tired. If I could, I would because I just want to kill the time until I go back to work because then at least I'll have something to do. But I was just sitting in my hotel and I was like, well, I guess I'll, I was doing a lot of swimming because I was trying to lose weight. I was, I was way heavier than I was, which is another thing that I, I didn't like about my situation. But I would go and swim a lot. And then, so for this particular day, 
Uh, I just walked around for like an hour and a half outside, just random directions, sort of picking whatever seemed to write at the time. And then, uh, being very cold, as usual. A lot of snow. And I didn't drink at the time either, which may have helped pass the time, but... I think I rightly judged I wasn't in a mental state to bite that off, which... I'm kind of grateful for it, eh, in the long run. So, yeah, there's not a lot to do in Green Bay if you don't like football or beer or cheese, which I like cheese, but I was fat, so uh, not a good mix. Anyway, so very cold, uh, went to the hotel room, sat on the bed, sort of stared at the wall, looked at myself in the mirror and hated what I saw. And I was like, fuck it, I'll just go sit in the hot tub. So I put on like some swimming trunks or whatever, and then I just went down and I, for like an hour, or no, more like 20 minutes because otherwise you get lightheaded. I remember just sitting in the hot tub and like, <sighs> I feel like I'm letting the water like come up to my ears and just staring ahead. And just thinking like there's nothing, there's nothing here for me. Not at all. Uh, just thinking like, I'm so fundamentally unhappy. The, no, nothing about this is nourishing to me. I think that was it really when I when I realized that I had derived no joy from anything in the last like week there, there is a base level of fun that I have when I'm at a computer and like working with a computer and listening to music that that tickles something but gosh has your drunk self ever sabotaged your sober self? I experienced this recently and I'm really mad at myself. Uh, no. Maybe beyond the extent of my drunk self being more more honest than my sober self is willing to be. But, I feel, no. I feel like largely when I'm sober, I make the same decisions. When I'm, when I'm drunk, I certainly regard myself, my self safety a lot less. Uh, but that's easy to do. Identify with this so much. So glad I found your path. Well, I mean, I, I hope it works for you too. This is this is what sucks. Is like I can't, I can't distill this into to practical advice for anybody. What do I say? Yeah, no, Bella. I was thinking about that specifically. <laughs> fell off the roof. I still feel bad about that, because honestly, if it, if, if it were just me, I wouldn't give a shit, because that doesn't bug me, but I I put Stephanie through way more worry than she deserved, and that's not okay. So, yeah, I still feel bad about that. I've apologized a lot. Uh, Gordon Freeman, it is you, isn't it? The science has been mouth. tracking your progress with the Black Mesa security system. Unfortunately, so is the military. That suit of yours is full of tracking devices. Still, it's better than going naked in this place. It's cold in there, and you'll have to hurry. It could sap your suit power in a matter of moments. If you're bent on reaching the Lambda complex, then you'll want to keep to the older industrial areas where the security system is full of holes. It's worked for me so far. Thank you. Oh, that's right. You can bring it with you, right? Into the freezer? No? Dang it. Because I'm pretty sure he's like, eh, eh, ah! This doesn't hurt him? Maybe not. I respect them for trying to, like... Trying to make some varied environments, but... There is not a no Rise Up Gamer alive that enjoys uh, a zone in a game where you, your health ticks ticks down. But yeah, to the people in chat saying, uh, like, it's enough to know that there's somebody else going through a similar process and that it can get better. Uh, I understand that. I try to, to me, I'm like, well, it would be nice to do more, but when I think about, when I think about myself, in that situation, all I, all I ever wanted was, yeah, identity. Oh, no, oh. okay, there you will be forever. Arm outstretched, melty mouth, kind of halfway open. Oh, he's got a sad face. 
Yeah, press F for... That dude has... Does that scientist have a name? I don't know. Demon, you're in a... Uh, Demon Batosai, you're in a similar situation? I think... I think... A significant portion of working adults are in a similar situation, which is... It's sad, man. Something's gotta be broken with the system when a lot of people feel... Trapped and unsatisfied with the work they do just to belong in society. This is why gamers gotta rise up. I don't know though. I I think the the counterpart to that is that as I think it truly is, you just have to find a group you belong with, and then the work doesn't matter so much as long as you're doing it with people that you like or that you identify with. And then it just takes a little self-initiative and willingness to to brave some uh uncertain future so like I said I ah. one of the things that really that, that kicked off my desire to change my situation was that uh, I, I really thought back to when I worked at GameStop and how I really enjoyed that job until I was made a, like an assistant manager and then I had to work like open and close shifts by myself and then it was a job that I hated and I was like how did this job Changed so drastically. It's because I was working alone. Um, or working with a manager that I didn't really identify with. So, yeah. So it really is, it really is all about the people you're working with. It's not so much the work. But I do think you can hedge your bets a little bit. If you're in a line of work where you're... Freeman, right? It's likely that you'll be around people Make that you identify sure you with. Don't... Oh, ah! Oh, the assassins, yeah. I forgot about them. How does it feel going from working for a media company to being the editor in chief for not only that brand you worked for, but technically control the social media accounts of an entire deceased company? Maxi, I don't feel anything. And I. I that feels like the wrong answer. But I don't need my ego to be stroked, so it's not getting stroked. All I think about is the work ahead of me. And that seems like such a diplomatic answer, but it's honestly true. I don't feel any resentment about anything that happened. So I don't feel any smug victory in what's happening now. I do feel... It does feel nice that something good happened. I do, I do feel uh, faith and hope that a lot of people identified a scenario where they could do something that seemed right and they did it. That's really cool. Oh, Arise Chicken. Arise Chicken! What is that from? Arise Chicken. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't... um. Oh yeah, this fucking part. This part. Aquatis hunger first, that's right. Yeah, thank you. Ow! Ow! Yeah, it's kind of like kind of like I'm alluding to with the animation is so weird. Ah! Kind of like I'm alluding to with like like I talked about a while ago with the drama about the bloggers who just wanted to be like respected for their opinions and shit. They wanted to have the, the rightest think. And they wanted that to be their value in the world. And, like, I want I want my thoughts on Darksiders to be the most important. And that will be why I'm paid. I sort of identified early on that that was not something that interested me. So, I don't get an ego lift out of thinking that this is like a vindication of my... Opinions or thought process? It's mostly that I just I hung tough. I hung tough. That's really it. I just outlasted a lot of people. Uh, I don't think that, that I don't think that that's worth patting myself on the back over. I just think that 
And the work suited me, so I, I stuck with it. That's it. Other people moved on. So... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I thought a lot about that. Like... It, it should mean more. Uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't. I feel like in a lot of ways, kind of like... All, to tie it all together. Uh, oh yeah, candles, you going to bed? Alright. Have a good night. Thank you for hanging, hanging tough for so long. Pennywise, greetings. Sri Lanka. Nice to see you. I do enjoy it when people from all over the world tune in because I get to absorb your perspectives and that's... Good God, is that intoxicating. Uh, one of the cooler things about Half-Life is that it happens, like, real time. So that the skybox changes from night to day while you're going through areas and stuff. So many assholes are but heard about the Borderlands since gaming, but I'm not a border, not a Borderlands fanboy, but I'll probably play and enjoy it. Yeah, I I think a lot of that could have been helped. The title kind of came after the script, and that's my fault. Should have been a little more attentive. I think if if we had introduced the episode and framed it a little better to match the title, it wouldn't seem so clickbaity. speed runs no I no I don't I don't have the time nor the willingness to get dedicate so much time to one game I want to play every video game ever made you want to talk about like life goals I think that would be a goal of mine and and even more than what I already do I think that's th that's absurd to the point of unrealism of thinking that play playing all games could be a livelihood. Some streamers do it, but I think those streamers have a lot of uh, asset skills and, and talents that I do not. Oh yeah, they take all your shit. That's right. You can't. Yeah. There's so many you never want to play. They are terrible. Oh no, I agree. I'm not. Definitely not in the camp of every game is pure and sacred and, and wonderful and beautiful and has something to teach the world. 100% no. Uh, more that uh, there's a lot of games that I'll, I'll want to play and just I'll probably never have the time to. But I've been thinking about that lately. When I think about... Uh, like, uh, the next phase of my life that with with the graces of Twitch, and who knows what that's going to look like in 15 to 20 years, but maybe I could look at something like an early retirement where I work really hard for a couple decades and put away a lot of money, and then I can sort of lean back on getting some kind of income from Twitch and just fucking play video games all day. That'd be sick. Probably turn off the webcam. The, the Zoomers don't want to see an old-ass man playing Half-Life. <laughs> they want to see a cool a cool dude with hot takes, so... Oh, yeah, the, the Forbes article? Uh, it's an op-ed, whatever. People can think of whatever they want. I think it's... I think... God, I want to... I want to shake the hand of the editor that... put... gave that headline to it. Sekiro needs to respect its players and add an easy mode? Good God. That is... That's hot take o'clock. That is that is such a garbage sentiment. Just the headline. I think one could be justified in saying that that is. Uh... I haven't read the article, but I can certainly understand the sentiment of 
Everyone is enjoying this, and I am not. So please make it so that I can too, please. God damn it. Fuck. I understand that a lot. Because guess what? I hated League of Legends, and I don't like Apex Legends at all. So I get, I get the sting of feeling like the universe is onto something that you just don't like. Or can't hang with. Guess what? I like Sekiro, so... Dang. I guess not everything is for you. And... It's, it's a rough feeling to feel excluded. A lot of white dudes are not used to that feeling. So, yeah, it's, it's funny when, like, people feel excluded for the first time in their lives. And the way they react to that feeling. Again, haven't read the article, so I'm making a whole lot of unfair assumptions here. But, Sekiro is a wonderful game that I would never... Never resent anyone for opting out of playing. Oh yeah. But, the headline itself... The headline itself implies that... It is a virtue for games to appeal to all demographics and all groups all the time, which is not true at all. Not even a little bit true. It is so fucking untrue that it's frustrating. Uh, games are... I mean, I guess, I guess commercial media... Critics of commercial media need to figure their fucking shit out, man. Alright? How... How can you be a critic... ...and not divorce financial or audience appeal... ...from creative... ...value? To conflate the two is so like late-game capitalism that it blows my mind. It's, it's kind of gross that a writer could think the two are synonymous. That a work of art is best when it sells best. That may not have even been the intent. And again, oh, this is me only assuming from the headline. I should read the op-ed because the headline is so perfect. This is why, this is why it's so perfect I don't want to shake the hand of the editor that wrote it. Because I'm like, motherfucker, you pissed me off just from that headline. Because it implies so much that's wrong! That is so wrong! Consider it's a Forbes article, they appeal to people who want to make money. A tougher experience means... A tougher experience means less market share. That's what readers of Forbes care about. Yes! You're... you're so yeah, you, you are definitely striking at the heart of the issue, right? Which is... Sekiro's a commercial product. So... Are we evaluating its success or failure as a creative endeavor? Or its success or failure as a... Uh... Uh... Like a commercial product, does it appeal to and sell to as many many people as it possibly could? It should be fucking clear by now that From Software is not into that. It's an accident that they hit super popularity with with Soulsborne. It's a big ass accident. It's circumstantial. They've run with it, and I respect them for that. And I respect even more that they've run with it and still continued to make gamey ass video games because that's all they've ever made in a world where like we're dealing with ai that will change the game to suit your whims based on your socio-economical platform and and your geolocation and well we profiled you as this kind of person so we know that you can tolerate exactly three and a half losses in online mode i mean shit dude if apex legends had this shit they would have fed me a win a long time ago and i might have kept playing but Sekiro is from a, a developer that accidentally tripped into like AAA dev, and they continued to make they continued to make legitimate, honest AAA hard ass video games. Minor. So to look at them and say, "Hold on, you're a big company now. You're not allowed to just make things you want." is the most wrong thing. Why would you stamp that out of existence? That is a Tender flower that deserves to be preserved. Put a glass cage around it. Ah, ah. 
Some of that stuff bums me out. Especially with, like, the environment we're leading into, which is that games... Games, like, just becoming full-on masturbation simulators. That's the next thing. We're gonna... We're gonna have Sekiro's, and we're gonna have Anthem's. Which... There's a whole... Interesting... Conspiracy theory thing going around about Anthem right now, which... A lot of that shit's already been happening for a long time. Isn't the Heart of Souls games that they do respect the players? Well, respect is a funny term. It, I think it really depends how you view respect. I think the big thing about the Souls series is that they, is that they are... What's the word? Mechanically... Consistent. A lot of games will, will fudge... A lot of games fudge the rules for the sake of the player feeling good about themselves. And I have so little tolerance for that, it makes me gag. That is honestly what, like... That is the thing that pisses me off the most about... And yes, I'm bringing it up Mass Effect. Mass Effect went... In the course of three games, went from a game that was an RPG to a game that was a stroke your dick video game. And... I have never fumed more at a game in my life than Rubber than Mass Effect 3. And I feel like I feel like everyone reacting negatively to Mass Effect 3 was because they emotionally knew what was going on but didn't intellectually know that the game changed from an actual video game to a you're so great machine of like a slap button you're great, slap button you're great. Touch the button for a little bit, shoot fireballs, fuck an alien. Everyone tells you you're awesome. It was... It was what that article seemed, based on the headline alone, seems to want Sekiro to be. And that's what makes me just shiver in anger at that headline and only the headline because I didn't read the article, not yet. Uh, and and what, what, there's, there is a hole in my heart because I see that coming. It's coming and it works. And that's what hurts me, is that it works. People don't know or understand or care. And when they do know, it's it's only gonna get better, which is what's really scary. The AI is only gonna get better. So even if you think you know, for now, it's gonna get harder to tell. The, the chat bots are going to get more efficient. And in the end, I guess it doesn't matter, because if you're entertained, that's all that matters, but... Honesty is gonna go, man. The rules don't matter at all. I have to stay up until Cyberpunk? Yeah. I have faith that Cyberpunk will be a real video game, with real rules that don't bend themselves to make you feel good about yourself. I have faith that Outer Worlds is going to be a real video game. There is a class of nerd that grew up playing D&D, &D, and those rules are... It's up to the DM, obviously, but... I mean, that's where this all comes from. That's what every video game is. You're just reenacting a D&D &D campaign. With a, a DM that isn't there. That was stupid. Uh, so you go to Texas... So you go to Texas, let's chat some Mass Effect. Which choice? Wait, what do you mean? Do you, do you agree with both extremes coexisting? Um... I do, insofar as both extremes are profitable. Uh, and so far they are. Which is... Every time a game like Resident Evil sells it enough to warrant its existence... I praise the fucking lord. Every time Dragon's Dogma gets re-released on something, I'm like... Oh, thank god. Oh, the world hasn't given up on it yet. It sold enough. Or a company believes it'll sell enough to put it out on something else. So maybe it will actually sell enough and they'll make another one. Um, that's, that's what gives me faith. When, when games like Apex Legends get really popular, I'm just like, the, it's free and that's important. And maybe that's really what it is. Like free to play will be the domain of the, we're going to scoop up everybody. And that's scary because kids play free to play and they won't understand that they're being coddled by an AI that is tailoring itself to make the game as appealing to them individually as possible 
That's just super scary. Uh, at some point, we gotta be telling four-year-olds what AI is and how it works. Content recommendation engines and shit. They gotta know about that. Maybe that's happening already, but... How do you even drop that on a kid? That, that everything about your consciousness is quantifiable and companies can and will and already have been like collecting a file on you so they can market to you for the rest of your fucking life. Have fun figuring out what free will is. Screw that, let's watch The Matrix. Oh wait, the fucking... The, the five microphones in my apartment heard me talking to you about free will and they're already recommending it to us. Because they know that I like The Matrix a lot! Because I googled it every day. <sighs> Is an Apex a multiplayer? How do they coddle people? Um, so for me, uh, I should be clear. I, I don't believe there's a whole lot of AI coddling going on in, in Apex. The coddling, I believe, is the... The looting aspect, the gear aspect, the, the mishmash of a... A sort of lizard brain stroking mechanic with another game that doesn't match it at all. It's essentially playing Candy Crush and then playing a shooter. Uh, which... Whatever. It's like... Again, it's like it's like MOBA except much more approachable. Even MOBA was like, why is there a leveling, why is there a leveling layer to this game? It doesn't make sense. Why should I have... Uh, I won't get into it. You're you're correct in 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 pointing out that the analogy wasn't quite quasi, quite analogous there. I guess what really has me freaked out is when a game like Apex does have AI tweaks, where they just they massage your health or massage your armor, or while you're running down a hallway, they just spawn some bots in front of you. Sorry, not what I meant. What do you mean? No, 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 no. I'm trying to be trying to be accommodating. You're, you're totally right. It was it was a it was another thing in the back of my head that uh, and yeah, Carrie Ann Moss is some hard queen material. Jesus Christ, she fucking owns all those movies. How is she sh how is she so good and not in so many things? That's what bums me out, man. How do I get to? spend my days making videos about video games and Carrie Ann Moss isn't like cast in everything in the world that doesn't make any sense to me that's what's not fair oh I'm back here there are a couple of ways after the game to make it harder after I assumed you just would never level yourself if you'd be given infinite funding in the matter, what genre slash subgenre of game would you want to make? Especially considering your impending early retirement as a geriatric streamer. Uh, I don't know that I'd ever want to make a game. Now, I've seen... I've seen what happens. And I have no interest in that. There are enough people who are brave enough to do that instead of me. And I'm very grateful that they are willing to do it so that I can consume their creative output. I think there are so many games that I can play and learn from that there's not... I am... There's no thought in my head that I'm convinced somebody else hasn't already done. Uh, and better. So... As I recall, one of these is like broken off and you can swim through. No? I don't think I went this way. I gotta go through the chompers. None of the people I know are passionate about it like you are. Uh, yeah, sometimes I wonder, maybe it's a little too much. But hey, what is, uh, what's drinking on a Friday night for? Speaking of which, I have to go use the restroom, so I'll be right back. See you guys in a minute.